Well, what's your name, sir? Larry. Larry? Yeah, yeah. Larry, uh, where are you from? Half Moon Bay. Half Moon Bay. Did you realize today, <laughs> I didn't, today, uh -huh. this very day, is the 100th anniversary of the National Park Service. No, I know they're having a ceremony up there. The service. Oh, it's, it's, it's over, over now, now, huh? Yeah, it was at 1 o'clock. They had the John Muir guy up there. Oh, really? Talking, and it, yeah, it was about 35 people. They had the deputy director of the Sierra Club up there. Ah. Uh, all the Park Service people, the architect uh, for the Park Service. They knew all, all about the hut. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I have... No champagne, though. I was a little upset. Yeah, we could have had some yeah. beer or steaks. Yeah, or anything. They didn't. Yeah, do they didn't. They didn't. They didn't celebrate properly, yeah. no, huh? No, they did not. I, mean, <laughs> I was very disappointed. Well, maybe that accounts for why all these people are yeah. coming down the pass. Yeah, it is. It is now. Wow! Well, now everybody's coming. I'm mistaken. This is Mr. John Muir coming my way right here. I got to get my equipment working. That's for sure. Yeah, it looks like it is working. Actually, this guy is the John Muir imitator, I think. And so I want to go up and see if I can have some fun with him. Now, um, Mr. Muir, I understand that from your standpoint, the uh, Sierra Mountains are really cathedrals. Is that true? I, it's the grandest cathedral that God ever built. You know, people go inside of these, these buildings, you know, they call churches, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, Take the Hetchetchi, for example. I may as well tear down the, you know, the people's churches and cathedrals and make water tanks out of them, rather than destroy this grand cathedral consecrated by God in Yosemite. Hetchetchi is the second sister to Yosemite. I that it is, lad, and it was a terrible loss. It was. No. Broke my heart. It did. Broke your heart at the end of life, did it not? Probably led to, a, to an early demise. That's know. right, because it was a very bitter pill to swallow. Well, uh, it's the it, it's 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 close. It's like getting me started on talking about timber thieves and sheep herders, you know, lad. Oh, uh, they leave thieves. devastation. When I speak of them, I cannot help but use a little bit of purple language. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the Scottish in you, I think, you know? I, hey, um, you know, another thing I was thinking about, which they rarely talk about, is that period of your life where you did the thousand-mile walk. Do you remember that early in life? How could I forget, you know? It happened right after that accident in that factory in Indianapolis. Um, you almost lost your eye. After my sight came back. You almost lost your eye, didn't you? Well, during the time, I almost lost my sight, but I gained my vision. <laughs> my affliction took me to the sweet fields. Uh -huh. When the factory owners offered me a partnership in the business if I retur returned to work, it was the opportunity to become a millionaire, but I turned them down and chose to become a tramp. That's Setting right. out on a thousand mile walk from Kentucky to the Gulf of Mexico, in Kentucky, I asked a man for the directions of the Mammoth Cave. Now it's no more than 10 miles from where he lived. But he said he'd never been there. But it was nothing but a big hole in the ground. Ah. One of those good practical sorts of people who can see no value in anything you could not eat. I, I remember him, Billy the Sheep Herder. Now oh, he had no, on Billy you. the Sheep Herder was up here in the Sierra, you know. Up Mr. Delaney asked me to go with his sheep up here to the high country in the Tuolumne Meadows. And I said, Mr. Delaney, I know nothing of sheep. He said, I have a shepherd, John. He's lazy. Do not trust him. <laughs> you watch the shepherd. Let him watch the sheep. <laughs> and then I met Billy the sheep herder. <laughs> oh, Billy. Did Billy have and greasy Billy pants? Billy never bathed or washed his clothes. That's right. He was sitting next to the campfire, eating his beans and greasy mutton, wiping his hands upon <laughs> his clothing, and then go up to retire in the corral with the sheep. <laughs> in the morning, if I ever wanted to learn anything of the local flora or fauna, I merely had to look at Billy. <laughs> his clothing was covered with 
minerals, dried leaves, needles, insect wings. Why, the man was a walking natural history museum. <laughs> and he changed the exhibits daily with the topography. <laughs> Most of us, our clothes grow thinner with wear, but uh, Billy seemed to grow thicker. <laughs> and Billy's the one that he had no use for the Yosemite. No use. He said, what do you want with that? I said, Billy, let's come to come with me. Take a look at the Yosemite Valley. He said, I did not want to go see that. It's just a big hole in the ground. That's right. Yeah. Hey, one thing before you go, would you say one word about your meeting with uh, Emerson? Oh, Emerson. The most, uh, what can I say? Ralph Aldo Emerson, the most the most sequoia-like soul that ever met. Ah. His eyes as gentle as a tree's. His smile as sincere as the sun. We spent an afternoon in Mahangna, south on the side of the mill, and there made plans for a camping trip in the Mariposa Grove. Camp out, said Emerson. Yes, we must camp out. When we reached the grove, Emerson looked up and said, Ma, one could only wonder at the wonder of these wondrous trees without wondering more still. I think Mr. Emerson was rather fond of the word wonder, eh? He was indeed. But his friends were afraid he'd catch a bit of a chill in the night air. Emerson was 60 years old, the autumn of his years. Stay, I pleaded, you're a sequoia yourself, why you can't acquaint with the brethren, man. To leave now would be to remove the plate from the camera before it was fully exposed. <laughs> but he tipped his hat and he waved goodbye. <laughs> I would never see Emerson again. Oh, he often wrote, urging me to come east and study with him, but I answered them in his own words. Insist on yourself. Never imitate. <laughs> that night I was lonely in the Sierra for the very first time, but I soon had a grand fire. And as I looked up at those great trees, I realized the trees are not going to Boston, and Emerson's spirit was still with me. Uh, oh, for a life like this, uh, who wouldn't be a mountaineer? Who wouldn't be a mountaineer? And Emerson had the soul of a sequoia, didn't he? Ah, that he did, you know. I remember when you spent the night with Teddy Roosevelt. Ah, oh, Roosevelt! Finest man I ever met. I almost fell in love with him. I did. Uh -huh. uh, those four magical days camping with the president would send out ripples like a pebble dropped into a pond. Yeah. Those ripples are still reaching us today, you know, lad. They're called our national parks. Our national parks. That's right. Uh, you know, he went back to Washington and talk Congress into establishing five new national parks now they have them. That's right. Under the, the Antiquities Act uh, declared 16 national monuments, set aside 30 million acres of forest reserves, created the United States Border Service, appointing different pitch on the first rank. And 51 national wildlife refuges to save our tethered friends from the blue hunters. That's right, that's right. And you called uh, Roosevelt a man who, in the end, had a serviceable conscience. That he did. <laughs> he was a politician, too, you know. Right? Yeah. Take, take no mind of that, but, you know, I dearly loved the man I did. Well, thank you for touching uh, those two men, and thank you for being the source of the conservation movement today. I often say that John Muir is a true hero for the children today because he left the world a better place. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. Well, thank you, John Muir. Thank you for talking with me. I it appreciate it. It was a grand it. thing to run into on the trail today, it was. I knew we'd be friends. I knew we'd be friends. Thank you. Oh, thank you, lad. Thank you. <laughs>